I personally don't really understand the hype behind it, and you probably already know I'm gonna compare it to, just a giant turd torpedo. Am I out of place saying that this thing literally looks like a giant? For some of you, it might be the best day of your life, but for others, it's just another day because the UCS sail barge has finally been revealed to the public. Set number 75397, UCS sail barge, just under 4,000 pieces, releasing for $500 on October 3rd, and it might be October 1st for the VIP members. The set has been hyped for so, so long, it seems. I've just been sitting here, sitting by, thinking to everyone, why is everyone so hype about the UCS sail barge? Why are some of you watching this video right now probably furious with me, so angered, that I am not just as hype as you. It's mainly because we see it in Return of the Jedi, we know exactly what it is. And so why would we be surprised about what the sail barge is going to look like? Pulling up our first picture here today, like, you look at it and you say, yeah, that's, that's a UCS sail barge. So I personally don't really understand the hype behind it. I would compare it to, and you probably already know I'm gonna compare it to, just a giant turd torpedo. Am I out of place saying that this thing literally looks like a giant piece of doo-doo? Like, am I out of pocket for that? I don't know, maybe I am out of pocket. I'm not gonna just dog on this thing the whole time. I'll talk about some of the things I like about it, some of the things I don't like about it, but let's be honest, it's not the most glamorous UCS set, and I know that a lot of people, a lot of you are probably gonna say, well, all the ships we've gotten are all gray. Come on, come on. So that's kind of where I'm sitting at with the UCS slave barge. Now that being said, dropping $500 for this thing seems steep. So I want to give you some scale. We know it's going to be about 30 inches long. And when we pull other Lego sets that are the same length or within plus or minus an inch or less, we get to the Batman Gotham City animated series display set. Now this set is exactly 30 inches, so if you were to put the sail barge on a table with this set, it would be literally the same exact length. So you see this very nice lady sitting behind this mural piece. The barge would be literally the same exact length as that set that you see in front of you. So that just kind of gives you some idea with the scale. Now let's get in some more detailed pictures. Of course, anyone who had this set from 2006, 2007, like myself, it's definitely calling back to more of those vibes. So when we compare the UCS sail barge to the actual product, we can get a pretty good idea of the size comparison. It does scale actually fairly, fairly well as I'm switching back and forth. So I do really, I, I applaud the designers on this. They did a great job of keeping that scale relatively so. As far as characters standing on the ship though, I think that's where it's slightly going to break down. If you have a minifigure standing on this deck, they're going to go way over the top of the railing, whereas in the movie, the railing comes to about their neck. And I don't think we were ever going to get that type of scale with this set. But here's a really good picture of them standing on that deck. You can see Leia there on the gun. Everyone's just chilling. Everyone's having a good time in this scene, in this shot here. What a great time. But you can see here in this picture, this person, they're standing in the middle of the ship, but still their scale is about to their shoulder, no lower than their shoulders where that railing is. It is scaled down a little bit compared to minifigure scale, but I think the scaling is about right where it needed to be for something like this. Now the price... People are going to haggle on that price all day long. And that's kind of, that's the norm. Uh, I don't think any of us are surprised by that, but there are some fun aspects of the inside of the ship as you see here. And I'm actually very glad as you can see throughout the ship, they gave us some studs placed throughout, which is very, very important because the Jabba Sail Barge is a product of the Star Wars universe that we need to have places for decked out minifigures to go. And we need to put minifigures all throughout this set we don't just want a couple sitting here and there, but we re it really needs that aspect to where you can just stock it full of figs. The back of the ship is kind of where most of the action is happening. We've got Leia and Jabba here, Bib Fortuna chilling out. Max Rebo is just hanging out, vibing in the corner, looking great, and we'll of course get to those mini figs. Oh, the twin suns on the box. That's actually a nice touch. Box art itself, certainly a contention among some of the fans. I think it is what it is. It does appear also that the set is very modular in some sense. Sense, which is really really good thinking back to the fact that we want to have quick ready access to this set which is very nice honestly moving on to those mini figures of course some of them very very highly contested and if i were to just look at these mini figures as a whole i think the biggest crime 
for this set is the fact that we only have one Gamorrean guard. When you look across all of Star Wars media, it's very, very obvious that we rarely ever see only one Gamorrean guard hanging out. And so I really, really wish that we had a better opportunity to get more Gamorrean guards, because if it was up to me, I would have like five, six, heck, maybe even 10 Gamorrean guards hanging out on my Jabba sail barge. Of course, Bib Fortuna has had some chatter throughout the community as well because they are reusing the mold from Boa Fett's throne room. Now, you may be saying to yourself, why is that a problem? Well, that's a problem because the Bib Fortuna used in the Boba's throne room scene is actually from Book of Boba Fett, under which he is very, very, might I say, very overweight. And so his Leku and Montrals are much, much bigger than they should be in Return of the Jedi. So it's kind of a shame that they just reuse that same mold. I get it. I, mean, I definitely get why they would reuse that same mold, but it just, it is what it is. And it's kind of a shame because it does look pretty thick, if you know what I mean. Bib Fortuna's Leku are looking thick. Of course, we do have three pirates in this set, which you do have a couple options to gather some other pirates, whether you do get the Boba's throne room, for those of you that got that on a deep discount, or you can get the pirate snub fighter. I think those are a couple of other ships that give us some good options for some other pirate type figures that would fit on the sail barge here. Of course, two very highly, highly sought after figures, Salacious Crum, and more importantly, Max Rebo. Max Rebo is a spicy figure on the secondary market, and we're gonna get him here in this $500 set. Now, because we're getting him in a $500 set, I would expect his price, his value to remain at that higher range, but it, of course, will be interesting to see what people try to pawn him off at. Of course, it might be a different mold, but I, their intention is certainly to keep the same mold. C-3PO, boy, did they sort of let us down with C-3PO. Of course, he does have that arm printing, but they refuse to give us that dual molded silver leg in any set, which is kind of a shame, unfortunately. I wish we could have gotten the dual molded leg in a UCS set, no less. I think Lego could have sprung for him being a little more spruced up in this set here today. Now last, well, second to last, maybe least depending on who you ask because they decided to make Leia a little more family friendly. I guess they decided that she was showing a little too much cheek in her last minifigure leg. We're getting a little more kid friendly Princess Leia. Of course, those are dual molded legs, which is nice. I don't know if I necessarily have a problem with this because this is a kid's toy. I can understand Lego not necessarily wanting to show too much implied side cheek when it comes to their minifigures. But alas, we're getting this. Of course, that new hairpiece is looking amazing with the gold accents. So I really, I love that aspect of this set. So maybe if it's your preference, just change out those legs. But moving on to our last figure, of course, we do have to talk about the main man, of the hour peeking out down but look at him peeking down below here i believe the intention is to give him a little more detail to the existing mold if we pull up the other java here we can see that it looks like they intended to give a little more detail a little more printing on this java minifig and i know it was a little contested because the pupils are being taken away in some alien figures but i'm glad that it looks like they kept the black pupil here for Jabba, which is very important, very iconic for this figure here. So I'm glad they decided to keep that. With the reveal of the UCS sail barge, you will have to let me know, am I absolutely crazy for thinking that this set is just not the move? Maybe it's a little too expensive at $500. I probably would have settled for $450 or closer to $400, but you'll have to let me know if you think it's worth it. Are you heading to the Lego store on day one to pick up this set? Very curious. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, and we'll be able to talk about it in the comments. And uh, hey, roast me if you think I'm a little crazy for thinking this, uh, because I'm curious to hear what all of you thought. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.